Good morning and welcome to this edition of the Lynn Hayes Freeland Show. Okay, so this is the 4th of July weekend. But this is a different 4th of July. Um, I don't know if you were able to, to spend time with family, if you had a smaller group, maybe you didn't do anything because these are different times. And because there are different times, we are living with a lot of stress. Stress from COVID-19, stress from protests, stress from dealing with the issue of race, stress from people saying, can I touch your hair? You name it, we're dealing with stress. So how are we dealing with it? Well, that's the focus of this edition of the Lynn Hayes Freeland Show. Here to help me talk about it are two experts in the field. Dr. Raymond Logan is a psychotherapist in this area. Everybody kind of knows that face. Welcome to the show. Sharice Nance is a licensed social worker. She's kind of a regular on the show. So I'll just say welcome back. Thank you both for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Thanks for the invitation. So when I say we are living under stress, every African-American I know since the moment we saw that video with George Floyd and every subsequent thing that happened seems like it laid another level of stress on our lives, even if we didn't realize it. Is that pretty accurate? Yes. Uh, there's two levels as I understand it. We have an individualistic culture. So most of the time we see ourselves as individuals. I think the added burden related to stress has to do with collective stress and collective trauma that black folks suffer. The challenge is we get waves and waves of stress. For example, the police shooting of unarmed black folks. I mean, we've what had three murders of black folks was what not three to four weeks. Mm -hmm. So before we have time to recoup from one murder and the collective and, and individual stress that that puts on us, here's another wave of collective trauma and stress. So we don't have time to heal from one stressor to the next, individually and collectively. That's what makes it so difficult. And Jerisa, I think that sometimes, at least I know for myself, there were some times that I knew I was a little bit off but I couldn't figure out why I was a little bit off or I knew that people would ask me a question and I was very short with them. Yes, no. Um, until I really sat down and figured that I needed to decompress. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And I think to piggyback on to what Dr. Logan said, we're experiencing a, a loss pileup, a, a trauma pileup. And to speak to what you said, Lynn, um, that uh, trauma response is real. You know, we're in the middle of multiple pandemics, a global health pandemic, you know, systemic racism, even though that's been going on for 400 years, but it seems like it's coming to a head now. So most of us are in survival. And when you're, when you're in survival, these are typical behaviors that happen. You're more exhausted. Um, you're more agitated. You, you tend to sleep more. You tend to want to eat more. And with many of the people that I work with, um, we we tend to, to beat ourselves up and set these high expectations. And we just got to remind ourselves, you know, we're in the middle of a, of a global pandemic. This is a trauma. We've all experienced a trauma. Like Dr. Logan said, this is a, a shared traumatic experience. And um, we got to give ourselves some grace. That's one of the best coping skills that we can offer is grace or self-compassion. One of the things I found is that when I do speak to people or I do connect with people, the first thing that we say to each other is, how are you handling this? Because it's almost like we all know that we're feeling some kind of way, but we don't know what to do with that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there, there, there are multiple ways to deal with it except those of us who had the blessings to be formally trained on how to deal with stress and trauma. And by the way, we have our own stresses and trauma that yeah. we manage well. <laughs> yeah. So we're dealing with it the way everybody else is, except we have a few more tools than most people. Mm -hmm. well, what's difficult is, is what works for most people. Right now, there's a great mindfulness movement in this country. They used to call it meditation. Yeah. So that's one way to tune within, to calm yourself down. There are other ways because stress is large in our physiology. People think it's your mind. Yep. It's, it's related to our mind hyphen body. So the mind and body are related. So we don't always understand that from, from the 
point of view of our culture. So what affects you physiologically, that stress you feel in your body, it affects your, how your mind functions. When your stress goes up, your thinking and decision-making goes down. So when you said you were a little bit off, that's mm -hmm. part of the issue because your, your emotional system, the amygdala shuts down your thinking so you can go into survival mode. You don't have time to think through things all the time. So some physiological interventions could be yoga. That's one. Exercise creates a lot of hormones in our system that are healing. So um, it doesn't always have to be a talk therapy. Those are two short answers for that. Mm -hmm. Therese, you probably have some more. Yeah, I think those are the main ones. Um, that's uh, I think you you pretty much um, summed it up in in like three minutes or less. And I, I just wanted to add that um, when when people experience trauma, the um, the attention span gets it shrinks to about twelve minutes. I, I, I read somewhere. So we're we're still trying to work. We're still trying to parent. We're still trying to be in relationships. We're still trying to function as if life was normal, whatever that, that means, you know, life pre COVID-19. So we're in the middle of a pandemic. I, I do believe that um, movement, any type of movement is the most effective way to complete that stress cycle because energy has to be moved through the body that, that trauma and that stress has to be metabolized. You got to do something with this. I'm glad you said that about that attention span thing, because I was beginning to think that was just me too. Because oh yeah. I feel <laughs> like uh, yeah. What did you just say? Oh my gosh, I find myself. We have to do, and I'm sure Dr. Logan can um can attest to this. We have to do progress notes, documentation after we meet with clients, and I find myself staring at the screen for 20 minutes, and the notes not even complete. <laughs> okay. okay. So there, we're all on the same. Yeah. Right. There's an additional piece to what's extremely important based on our evolution as human beings over millions of years, we have multiple components of our brain. One is called the reptilian brain, which is useful for our survival. It's always monitoring our environment to what's safe, what's a threat to our life, or what's dangerous. So that's on automatic pilot. We're constantly scanning for that. The other part of our brain deals with our emotions. And the top part is our thinking. So what's important, and I'll put this in terms of what we re need right now. We need safe, trusting, authentic, responsive, and empathetic relationships with a trusted other person or a trusted group. Because we're designed to stay physically close to and emotionally close to other people. <laughs> our survival depends on that based on our evolution. Because it's extremely frightening for us to be separated from our tribe. Yeah. We, were, we were, in ancient times, herd animals were mammals. So to be separated from a, a herd, you're susceptible to be killed by other prey animals. Other prey so animals. Hold that thought for just a brain. second. We got to take a commercial break, but I want to pick up on that. We have a lot more to talk about this morning on the Lynn Hayes Freeman Show. So don't go away. <laughs> 